this past week, we got confirmation from several major cruise lines that there will be further cancellation and delays to the resumption of cruising. We also learned about new home ports as well as cruise ship deployment plans. Don't worry if you missed all the news, you're in luck. I'm DB from EatSleepCruise.com and here are all the major cruise updates from the past week. Way back in early May, Carnival Cruise Line announced a major update to its sailing plan. In this plan, the cruise line aimed to return to service as of August 1st with a phased rollout approach. However, given the update regarding CLIA cruise members extending the voluntary cruise suspension until September 15th, it was no surprise that this past week, Carnival Cruise Line put out an official statement extending their cruise suspension until the end of September. Carnival Cruise Line's original plan was to begin sailing eight ships from its fleet from just three home ports in North America. This included Galveston, Port Canaveral, and Miami. While this plan seemed logical at the time, it slowly became apparent that cruises would likely not happen in August, given that the CDC had not issued any guidance on if and when its no-sail order would be lifted. With Norwegian Cruise Line's further suspension of most cruises through the end of September, it was only a matter of time until other cruise lines followed suit. This became definite when CLIA announced all members, which include most major cruise lines, had come to the decision to voluntarily suspend cruise operations from the US ports until September 15th on all passenger vessels with a capacity greater than 250. Compensation for travelers impacted by the latest Carnival cruise cancellation does vary based on the duration of the cruise. For cruises of five days or less, cruisers will receive 100% future cruise credit for the total amount paid for the cruise plus $300 of onboard credit applied to the sailing once it's booked. For cruises of six days or more in length, cruisers will receive 100% future cruise credit plus $600 of onboard credit. This offer is applicable to cruises booked by May 31st of 2021 for sailings departing by April 30th of 2023. If you don't take advantage of the above offers, you can complete an online form to request a 100% refund to the original form of payment. On Tuesday of last week, Royal Caribbean made a very similar announcement. Royal Caribbean Group provided further cancellations for all brands, including Royal Caribbean and Celebrity Cruises through September 15th of 2020. Interestingly enough, Royal Caribbean extended the suspension for its global fleet for most sailings only through September 15th, even though the competitor brands have extended until the end of September. With a goal of resuming operations on September 16th, there are a few exceptions to be noted. Canada sailings will be suspended through October 31st of 2020 due to the Canadian government's extended travel ban on cruise ship travel. Bermuda sailings will be suspended through October 31st, 2020. Voyager of the Sea sailings will be suspended through September 30th. Spectrum of the Seas and Quantum of the Sea sailings will be suspended only through July of 2020. Passengers impacted by these recent cruise cancellations will automatically receive 125% future cruise credit that can be applied to a sailing that occurs before April 30th of 2022. But cruisers must book this voyage by December 31st of 2021. Impacted guests could also choose to lift and shift their reservation to a 2021 date protecting the original price and or promotion. This new cruise must be the same itinerary, length, product, and stateroom category as the original sailing and occur within four weeks before or after of the original sale date. Of course, guests can complete an online refund request form and receive a 100% refund to the original form of payment within 45 days of request. As Royal Caribbean's sister brand, Celebrity Cruises is also extending its pause of global operations for all sailings departing on or before September 15th with select additional cancellations beyond this date. Likewise, impacted Celebrity Cruises guests will receive compensation of 125% future cruise credit that will be processed automatically. This future cruise credit is good through December 31st, 2021. If cruises prefer a 100% refund, they may submit a request online anytime up until the expiration date of the future cruise credit. MSC Cruises continues to expand its North American presence. The European Cruise Line will begin sailing from Port Canaveral for the first time this winter and will offer a year-round presence at this popular Florida cruise port. 
MSCC side will begin cruising from this new home port in November through March of 2021. MSC Davinia will replace Seaside and begin sailing from this home port in March 2021. These ships will sail a variety of three, four, and seven night cruises to the Caribbean and Bahamas, including stops at MSC's brand new private island Ocean Key Marine Reserve. This new private destination is definitely one of the hottest private islands to visit once cruising resumes. MSC Cruises has also confirmed that it has voluntarily further extended its suspension of ships operating from the U.S. ports to the Caribbean until September 15th, 2020. This announcement impacts two ships, MSC Seaside and MSC Armonia. MSC Cruises plans to have its entire fleet, including two brand new vessels currently under construction, in operation by March of 2021. While Carnival Corporation recently announced its plan to remove six of their older ships from service within the next 90 days, there was no mention of what ships would be leaving the fleets. Carnival Corporation owns nine brands and over 100 ships, so this left cruisers questioning if their favorite ship would be on this list. Well, it appears that the first ship will be from the Costa Cruises fleet. The Costa Victoria, a 75,000 gross ton ship, was built in 1996 and has been an active part of the Costa fleet up until the suspension of cruise operations in March of this year. The surprising twist is that this relatively modern ship will be scrapped. What does this mean for the next five ships on the chopping block in Carnival Corporation's fleet? Similarly, the Spanish cruise company Pullmanteur, which is 49% owned by Royal Caribbean, filed to reorganize due to the inability to pay current debts. Recent speculations are reporting that the former Royal Caribbean cruise ships, Monarch of the Seas and Sovereign of the Seas are currently being stripped which leads to the assumption that they too might be scrapped. This is very sad news for any cruise enthusiast. And there you have it. That's the latest cruise updates from the past week. But of course, we'd love to hear from you. Let us know in the comment section below whether you're ready to start cruising when it resumes, hopefully later this fall. I'm DB from eatsleepcruise.com. And if you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Make sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, or you've been lurking around for a while and haven't done so, what are you waiting for? Make sure to subscribe down below and to click the notification icon. That way you get updated each week when we put out brand new cruise and travel videos. You can also say hi to us all over social media at Eat Sleep Cruise. And thanks again for watching.